In this video, we're going to talk about how to simplify trigonometric expressions. So before we work on this problem, you may want to write down a few formulas to keep in mind. So the first one will be the reciprocal identities. Secant is equal to 1 over cosine theta. And cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. Now you also need to know that tangent is equal to sine theta divided by cosine theta and cotangent theta is equal to cosine over sine. So make sure to write these formulas down because we're going to be using it throughout the course of this video. And then you need to know the trigonometric Pythagorean identities. The first one sine squared plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. And then we have 1 plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared. And then 1 plus cotangent squared, that's equal to cosecant squared theta. Now let's go ahead and get started with this one. So we can replace secant with 1 over cosine theta. Sine theta, we can leave it the way it is. We can just write that as sine theta over 1. And then I'm going to rewrite cosine theta. Now all we could do at this point is we can cancel cosine theta. So the final answer is simply sine theta. So this entire expression can be simplified to sine theta. Now let's try this one. Tangent squared theta plus sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Go ahead and simplify this expression. Now if you recall, one of the Pythagorean theorems that, I mean Pythagorean identities that was written earlier is this one. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this part with 1. So we're going to have tangent squared theta plus 1. Now if you recall another Pythagorean identity is 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. So this entire expression here is equivalent to secant squared theta. Now let's move on to the next one. Sine squared times cosecant theta times secant theta. How can we simplify this expression? Cosecant squared, we know it's equivalent to 1 over sine. And secant is 1 over cosine theta. Now sine squared we can write that as sine theta times sine theta. And so we could cancel one of the sine thetas on top with the other one on the bottom. And what we have left over is sine over cosine. Sine theta over cosine theta, we can reduce that to, or convert it, to tangent theta. And so tangent theta is equal to the entire original expression. Now let's move on to this one. Cotangent times tan plus cotangent. What will this expression simplify to? Now we know that cotangent is well, actually, first, before we change cotan into cosine and sine, let's distribute. So cotangent times tangent, we'll just leave it as cotan tan. And then cotangent times itself, that's going to be cotangent squared theta. Now, let's convert cotangent into cosine over sine. And tangent is sine over cosine.
Now I'm going to leave cotangent squared the way it is. Notice that sine cancels and cosine cancel. Sine divided by sine is 1. Cosine divided by cosine is 1. So if this part is 1 and that is 1, 1 times 1 is going to be 1. So this whole thing reduces to 1. So we're left with 1 plus cotangent squared, which is another Pythagorean identity. And as we wrote earlier in the beginning of the video, 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. So the original expression can be reduced to cosecant squared theta. Number five, secant squared times one minus sine squared. What can we do with this one? Now let's focus on the part one minus sine squared because that's related to a trigonometric identity. We know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So we can replace 1 with what we have here. Or we could just replace this whole thing with cosine squared. No matter how we do it, the result will be the same. So let's try replacing 1 with what we have here. So this is going to be sine squared plus cosine squared minus sine squared. So all we did was we replaced 1 with sine squared plus cosine squared. Now sine squared minus sine squared, that's going to cancel. And so we're going to have secant squared times cosine squared theta. Now secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. And then when you multiply that by cosine squared, these two will cancel, which means the final answer can be reduced to 1. So that's it for number 5. Number 6, cosine theta plus sine theta times tangent theta. How can we simplify this to a more simpler expression? One of the first things we can do is we can replace tangent with sine over cosine. Now, what do you think we need to do next? Because it doesn't look like anything simplifies right now. One thing we could do is we can convert this into a single expression by turning this into a fraction and trying to get common denominators. So I'm going to multiply cosine theta over 1 by cosine over cosine. Cosine over cosine is 1, so it doesn't change the value of cosine theta. 1 times anything is going to be 1 times cosine, it's just cosine. So cosine times cosine, that's going to be cosine squared. And cosine times 1 is simply cosine. And for the other fraction, we have sine times sine which is sine squared over cosine. So now we have two fractions with the same denominator, which means we can combine this into a single fraction by adding the numerators of the two fractions. So we can write this as cosine squared plus sine squared theta, all divided by cosine. So now we have a Pythagorean identity. We know that cosine squared plus sine squared, that's one. And 1 over cosine, that's a reciprocal identity, that's secant. So the final answer of the original expression is simply secant theta. Number 7. Feel free to pause the video and try this one. So let's begin by using the reciprocal identities. So we can convert secant into 1 over cosine. Sine theta, we can just leave it the way it is for now. Cotangent, we can write that as cosine over sine. And tangent, I'm going to replace that with sine over cosine. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the sine theta. 
So sine times cosine over sine. Sine will cancel. So we're still going to have 1 over cosine on top. We're no longer going to have the brackets. When, sine and, and when these two signs cancel, we're just going to have cosine. Next, sine theta times this fraction. Nothing's going to cancel, so we're just going to have sine times sine, which is sine squared. And we have a cosine on the bottom. Notice we have a complex fraction. We have fractions within a larger fraction. So I'm going to try to get rid of these two fractions. And notice that they have a similar denominator, cosine. So what I'm going to do is the big fraction, I'm going to multiply the top of the big fraction by cosine and the bottom by cosine as well. Because cosine over cosine is 1. So if you multiply this fraction by 1, you're not changing the value of that fraction. These will cancel, and so I'm going to get a 1 on top. Here I have cosine times cosine, which becomes cosine squared. And I need to multiply this cosine by the other fraction. And these two will cancel, leaving behind sine squared. So now we have a Pythagorean identity on the denominator of this, of, of this fraction. So cosine squared plus sine squared, we know it's 1. And 1 divided by 1 is simply 1. So this entire expression reduces to 1. So that's basically it for this video. So now you know how to employ the reciprocal identities and the Pythagorean identities to simplify trigonometric expressions.